Let's all stand. Why don't you just lift your hands right where you're at. Let's invite the presence of the Lord into this place tonight. God, we thank you for your goodness to us. God, for another opportunity to come into your house, to glorify your name, to give you praise. God, we ask that your perfect will would be done in this place. God, let your presence saturate this house. Touch each and every heart. And let there be a drawing of your spirit, O Lord. We'll be quick to give you praise and glory and honor. In Jesus' name, and let the church say amen. Amen. Why don't you look at your neighbor and uh, just wave to them a little bit. Show that we're still friendly.
I love you, Jesus. I worship you, Lord. Thank you, God, for your presence and your power. Thank you, Lord, for the touch of the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God, you're worthy. You're worthy. Amen. You may be seated. Good to be here tonight. Glad that you've come. And uh, we're going to look into the scripture for just a few minutes. Young people are doing a little bit of work on their program tonight. And so pray that the Lord help them get everything together with that. While that they're doing that, we're just going to take a few minutes here in Bible study tonight. I believe that the Word of God is quick, powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. I believe it's what we need in 2020. I believe that it's everything that we need in 2020. I believe that God is the, the author, amen, of what we call the Holy Bible. And I believe that there were many, many writers, but there's one author, and that author is the Almighty God. Amen. I believe it's the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. Amen. I believe it's our lamp and our light. It's what leads us and guides us and directs us. And, you know, you can read it quickly and get something out of it. You can read it slowly and get something else out of it. You can take all the words apart and get more out of it. And you can read it six months later, that same passage, or three weeks later or whatever, and get something more out of it. The Word of God is alive. Amen. It truly is alive. And obviously because our God is alive. Amen. The author. Amen. Psalm 46. Verse number one. God is our refuge and strength. A very present help in trouble. Therefore will not we fear though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea though the waters thereof roar and be troubled though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof Selah there is a river the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God the holy place of the tabernacles of the most high God is in the midst of her she shall not be moved. God shall help her, and that right early. And then in Job 23 and 10, and we won't go through the whole story of Job tonight, but he said this, 23 and 10 of Job, he says, He speaking about God, knoweth the way that I take. And when he hath tried me, I shall come forth as gold. God knoweth the way that I take. And when he hath tried me, I shall come forth as gold. Did I get that reference right or did I mess it up? <laughs> Well, it's in the book. <laughs> God knoweth the way that I take. And when he hath tried me, I shall come forth as gold. I want to talk to us for just a few minutes here tonight on the giant of adversity. The giant of adversity. Now, we can refer to that giant in a general sense. Or we can look at that giant in a more personal fashion. We all recognize that there is an adversary, a devil as a roaring lion seeking whom it may devour, seeking whom he may devour. And we, we know that's in general terms the fact that humanity has an adversary. <coughs> There are those adversities or adversaries in our lives that gain their notoriety by their, their size or by their influence upon each and every one of us. And usually you will find out that each of us 
have some adversity in one area and the other will have adversity in another and it's, it differentiates between various people. But what is a giant to you may not necessarily be a giant to me, but we all have our giants to face in this life. When we speak about adversity, we're talking about difficulty and hardship or, or misfortune. How many times have you heard me say that the rain comes and the sun shines upon each and every one of us and, and uh, it, upon good and evil, upon those that are rich or poor, those that uh, you know, have certain difficulties going on in their life. Um, they can be red, yellow, black, white. Doesn't matter what race or it doesn't matter which country we're in. It's just a part of life. Adversity is a giant in the fact that it keeps coming back. So I'm not just referring tonight about one particular thing that you may have to deal with in your life. Because the way adversity works, or at least it seems to work for me, is that you face adversity, let's just say you face some adversity today, and you get over that adversity. And you may not have really any adversity tomorrow, but then the next day, adversity has a way of coming back, doesn't it? And it, it, it may be, maybe it comes in a little different way, but it's basically some adversity coming back into your life. And because of the coming back, many times adversity in a general sense is a great big giant for us to have to face. Our lives are full of adversity. And adversity is much like the Olympic hurdle. You clear the one obstacle and then you ready yourself for the next one. And the one that you have just cleared gives you some experience. It gives you some confidence. It gives you some courage. Uh, it gives you some strength. And we could go on with that, I suppose. But the purpose of those experiences is that we will, in fact, clear the next one that's right there in front of us. So never forget that the giant of adversity can and, and, and will be overcome every single time if, in fact, we will trust the Lord Jesus Christ, trust His Word, trust His experience, His Spirit moving inside of our lives. So, I would like for the next few moments here for us to notice the words of the psalmist in these five verses that we just read out of Psalm 46 and see exactly, or at least some of the things that the psalmist was referring to. There's some very interesting subject matter in these first five verses. And so, my first stop on this little journey in instruction here tonight is the words, though and therefore. Let me go back to the, the reading. God is our refuge, strength, the very present help in trouble. Therefore, will not we fear, though the earth be removed, and, and though is mentioned a few times even after that first one. So, though and therefore, therefore could, could be said consequently, accordingly, whence, or because of that reason. So, we could read that verse of Scripture and use because of that reason instead of Therefore, God is our refuge, strength, a very present help in time of trouble or in trouble. And because of that reason, we will not fear. Because of that reason. All right? And then we go on to, to though. And though means despite the facts. It means 
nonetheless, or however, nevertheless, or even so. And I like, and, and I like these. Be that as it may, at any rate, or regardless, or come what may. All right? That word, though, it has a, you could use a, a lot of different words in, in that. But when it talks about though, uh, let's just use, uh, though the mountains be carried, in, in spite of the mountains being carried, in, regardless of the mountains being moved, at any rate, we still have our hope, our trust, our help coming from the Lord. The psalmist is simply saying something like this. In other words, because of this, we won't fear that. Remember the psalmist said in Psalm 27, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The second thing I want you to notice in this reading, it says, though the earth be removed. And I believe that when these things are mentioned, there's some deep meaning or deeper meaning or some application that we can, can put into our lives that will help us every day. And so I, I've got this feeling that the psalmist is, is referring and, and God is, is, is teaching us that the earth being removed, or all of those confidences, all of those creature confidences that, that fail us, or that will fail us, and sink us, and even swallow us up. This particular psalm, Psalm 46, you remember is written too about the sons of Korah, and they had a definite problem with the earth swallowing them up. Though that which should support us, though the thing that should be carrying us, that we should be able to, to walk upon, though that be removed, we have an experience with the Lord Jesus Christ. We have an experience with God to help us. Have you ever been in an earthquake? Have any of you ever been in an earthquake before? Some, sometimes here in the state of Maine, we'll get a little tremor here and there. I remember as a, as a young child, we were in the state of Alaska, Alaska's earthquake country, and, and all of that. And I was only about 10 years old, but I remember when things begin to shake and the house begin to move back and forth. And it seems like it lasts for a long time. It really doesn't. But things shake and things move. And, and there was, matter of fact, a real severe earthquake before that we actually visited there uh, back in the, the 60s. But, uh, and it destroyed the, 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 the city. It, it destroyed a lot of people, took a lot of lives. And the damage was still there many, many, many years later. An earthquake is a very unnerving experience when the things that have been holding you up and the things that you've been able to lean on, the things that you've uh, expected to stay stood up and, and to be strong, and all of, all of a sudden those things begin to move. And there are, are times in our lives when the things that we expect to stand up and the things that we, we expect to support us and the things that we expect that we can lean on begin to shake, and it can be a very unnerving experience. We have a lot of confidence in, in I'm, just, I'm not trying to make a political statement here tonight, but we have a lot of confidence in this country and, and you know, over 200 years of experience and, and all of that. But we see a lot of that being shaken and, and, and we're, we're wondering, you know, where is this all going? What's going to happen? What is going to take place? Uh, some of us, uh, you, you know, or some of you may have, have jobs that you, you are working in and you've been on those jobs for, for, for many, many years. Uh, but when uh, cutbacks begin to, to head your direction and, and uh, maybe, maybe you hear the, the noise of uh, bankruptcies and, and uh, all of the different things that kind of happen and, and those, those foundational uh, parts of our lives begin to shake, there's... there's really nothing like that kind of an experience. 
until you're the one that's in those particular shoes. When, when you talk about the stock market losing, you know, many points and all of that, if you have no investment there, it doesn't worry you, it doesn't hurt, it doesn't bother you. But if you've got a 401k involved in that, it kind of gets your attention a little bit. So when, when things that we uh, have some confidence in or that, uh, that have been supporting us even for, for years uh, begin to shake, even though that happens, we have a, a God that has promised that He would be our refuge and strength and very present help in trouble. Though there's a shaking maybe in your marketplace, God is still our refuge and strength and our help. Amen. Though the earth be removed. A part of that uh, same structure is the people that we know. The individuals that we have trusted down through the years. It even, it may even be relatives that we have. It may be individuals that we work with. It may be individuals that we're in partnership with or, or whatever. Families and all of this. Mankind is very capable of failing us. And those things that once were our strengths in unity begin to shake a little bit. And even though mankind may fail me, even though there may be trusted individuals that might, uh, you know, let me down a little bit, uh, we have a confidence uh, that God is our refuge, God is our help, and God is our strength. Amen. You know, another thing that's a, a part of the, the earthly structure is wealth and riches and material possessions. And those things can be compromised. And those things have, in fact, a, a limited scope of value and worth and durability. Uh, the Bible speaks about wealth and riches being compromised through a moth or rust. That would corrupt them. Remember the, the admonition of the scripture where it talks about you take the wealth and you put it in a bag. But the bag simply has a hole in it. Bible speaks about the deceitfulness of riches and all of those different things. If the earth is being removed and shaken, there is a reason to, to fear for those who have laid up their treasures on earth. There is a reason for them to be extremely anxious. Those that have set their hearts upon treasures on earth. But not those who have laid up for themselves treasures in heaven. And those who have laid up them for themselves treasures in heaven, they're the ones that expect to be the most happy when the earth and all that's in it is truly behind them and the things of this life is behind them and they are in the presence of the Lord. We won't be worried about the stocks. So we won't be worried about the 401ks. We won't be worried about the homes and the automobiles and the bills and all of those different things because it will all be behind us. But it's for those that lay up treasures in heaven. Let those be troubled at the troubling of the waters who build their confidence on such a foundation that can be moved or float away. But for those who are led to the rock that is higher than I, they're the ones that find that firm, solid footing upon the rock. And that rock is Christ, Jesus Christ. Amen. So when the earth is removed, we have, amen, a God that will, in fact, hold us up. Praise God. Now, though the mountains be removed, 
There's another area here that, that kind of talked to me a little bit. When we're speaking of, say, the waters coming in, when you, you've seen probably some of the, the videos of tsunamis as it has come upon the shore, and where are people headed? People are headed to the high ground. They're headed to the mountains because they're not expecting for there to be any water that would make it to such a high place. And so I wanted to pause right here for just a moment because I believe that the Word of God is talking about the times in our lives even when the high places are being flooded. You expect the lowlands to flood. You really do. You, you, you look at those that live in certain places of the country and you think, why are you there uh, during a time like this? That's why when hurricanes come into those certain areas of our country, there are evacuations and people move out of that area until the storm passes over, until the floodwaters are abated. And that's why these things happen. But you don't expect it to be a flood where the, the mountaintops are covered. But in this psalm, we're talking about a mountain being moved to such a place that even the highest places, the unexpected places, are being overtaken and they're being destroyed. And so what would be some of those unexpected places that the scripture might be warning us or admonishing or trying to help us. How about some of the foundations? You say, well, that's from top to bottom. You're going from a mountaintop to a foundation. But I wanted to use a foundation because a foundation obviously is something that you depend upon to be able to build upon. But we're living in such a time, and there will be time when that it'll be even greater probably than what it is right now, that the foundations are being attacked and abandoned. What we are seeing in our society, in our culture, are the basic principles of common decency being destroyed. Who would have ever thought... That in the United States of America that we would be seeing, let's just say, abortion in the way that we are seeing it in our nation right now. It seems to me that back in the day there would have been some women in the streets decrying such an act as that. That there would have been, this would be something few and far between, but literally millions of babies have been aborted in our nation. It's an abandonment. It's an attack on a foundational principle of parenthood, of motherhood, of fatherhood. Basic principles of common decency. They're being destroyed right before our eyes. These basic principles have come under fire in, in a greater extent than what we've ever seen before. And I, I believe we're going to see it more even as we close in on the rapture of the church. The Bible does say that the love of many shall wax cold. So I'm, I'm, I'm believing that even though the mountains are being removed. And even though foundations are being swallowed up and being attacked and abandoned, that we have a refuge tonight. That we have a God that we can call on. We have a God that will help us. We need to pray. We need, to, we need apostolic revival and we need Holy Ghost outpouring in the United States of America. We need it. We need it desperately. And there, are two, there really are two different things. We call it revival, and, and I, I guess that's okay. But we need that, that surging of, of apostolic teaching, preaching, and, and miracles, signs, and wonders. The whole enchilada, if you please. And our, our world, our country needs to come back to the Lord Jesus Christ. We, we need to see this. We need to experience this. Amen. And so there's, 
the things that, that are just the basics that you would expect to be there all the time that are being taken away. And then it speaks, though, though the waters thereof roar. Adversity has a voice. Though the waters thereof roar and be troubled. You get close to that, that ocean and you can, it can be pitch black dark out, but you can hear those waves and a storm going through, you can hear the, 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 the roar of the waters and the roar of the wind and the troubling of the sea. Your giant of adversity has a voice. And that voice speaks to you probably every day. Not necessarily, but most likely. There's an everyday occurrence of that voice day in and day out. And you may be thinking, well, the, there are days I don't, I don't hear that giant. And I would say to you, that's probably the days that you don't listen to your giant. And I want that just to sink in a little bit. Because the devil, your adversary, does a lot of talking. Your adversity is going to speak to you as much as that adversity can speak. And if you listen to it, you're probably going to have a bad day. But if you'll trust the Lord and if you can get that voice out of your mind, if you can get him under your feet, or if you can just at least put him on hold... I mean, after a while of listening to the news reports, I'm pushing that button that mutes the audio on that radio in that car. I'm muting the audio. And I know that sometimes I, I, I get to listening, I get to hearing, but you have to get to the place where all of a sudden I've had enough and I'm tired of listening to the adversity and the adversary of my life. And today I'm putting him on hold and I'm not going to listen to him. I'm going to listen to the voice of God that tells me God is my refuge and God is my strength and he is my help in time of trouble. And though the seas roar and though the enemy talks and though the adversity speaks, I still have a God that is my refuge, strength, and my very present help. Amen. Another aspect of that voice is that there are times when your voice or when that voice of the adversary is going to resonate within you. What are you saying, Pastor? There's going to be times when that adversary comes against you, let's just say it's the adversary of depression or an adversary of, you know, uh, just no self-worth at all. And I know they kind of tie hand in hand and all of that. Or all of the past mistakes that you've made in your life. And, and, and you know, something begins to, to happen. Maybe, maybe your family relationship wasn't very good and and when you grew up, uh, you know, there was just a lot of anxiety and there was a lot of, of stuff going on that, that uh, you had to forget about. That you had to, you know, just kind of get behind you. You came to God. You repented of your sins. You were filled with the Holy Ghost. You were touched by God. God delivered and God helped you and all of that. But every now and again, that voice 
seems to come back up. Every now and again, we get reminded of some of the things maybe that happen, some of the experiences, some of the hurt and some of the pain. And, and, and some of the thoughts begin to come back into your mind and heart. Yeah, you're worthless. You're no good. Uh, uh, you're such a failure. You, you know, and all of these different things to begin to come back into your life. Remember this, that the enemy comes as a roaring lion. What's that telling me? And the seas will roar that there will be the times. Yes, there will be when I'll hear it. There'll be the times when it's amplified and I'll hear that adversary or that adversity speaking to me. But there'll also be the times uh, when there'll be the calmness uh, of the sea. There'll be the covering over all of those mistakes. Uh, there'll be the peace of God that passes all understanding that'll drown out the voice of the adversary that's telling you you're no good. You'll hear about God's love. You'll be feeling it in your life, your heart and spirit. There'll be the overcoming power of God working in your life. What is that? I'll tell you what it is. It is the fact that God is your refuge and God is your strength and God is your very present help in time of trouble. And because of that, though the voice of the enemy comes up, though the voice of the adversary whispers in your ear, you know I have a God that's going to help me or that is helping me at that that very, very time. Amen. So don't, uh, don't, uh, don't bury your head in shame and, and, and such when you're feeling like that, that that voice is kind of, kind of coming back and may try to steal your victory for a period of time. Now, how do you, uh, how do you face your your adversary, your, the giant of adversity. How do, how do you do that? Well, the, the Apostle Paul wrote to the Romans in Romans chapter number 8. And he said, what shall we say to these things? And you read those prior verses. And if that's what he's kind of talking about, those things that were going on. He, he said, if God be for us, then who? Can be against us. If, if in fact God is my refuge. If, if God is in fact my strength and present help. What shall we say to all of these things that we're dealing with right now? If God be for us then who can be against us? He that spared not his own son but delivered him up for us all. He how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It's God that justifieth. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again. Who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, peril, sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. <laughs> in all these things, folks, we have a hope tonight. In all this junk that's going on, that there is, in fact, power in that name of Jesus. Mighty power in that precious, precious name. For I am persuaded, convinced that neither death nor power, uh, nor death nor life, excuse me, nor angels nor principalities nor powers. He said, I'm convinced of this. Nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. When I consider, when we consider what God has provided for the comfort and the safety of His church. Gets us down to the last part of Psalm 46. Those steps, verses 1 through 5. When we consider what God has provided for the comfort and safety of His church. 
We shall see reason to have our hearts set, our hearts fixed, our hearts persuaded or convinced above the fear of evil, above the fear of evil tidings. There are evil tidings in our world. Speaking of tidings, remember the words of the angel. Behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. <laughs> That's an old one, Pastor. It sure is. The word of God is old. It's been around for a while. It's still effective. It's still real. It's still relevant for today. And I know we refer it to this scripture during the Christmas time because it deals with the birth of Christ. But remember, it's still for us every single day. I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people, for unto you is born this day. For you is born this day. For you, God manifested His self. For you, the power of God, the love of God was manifest. For you, in the city of David, a Savior, which is Christ the Lord, is born this day. So when I read Psalm 46 and, it, and where the psalmist is referencing the church, when he writes, God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her. And that right early. So how do we deal with this adversary? We must acknowledge who God is. Stand with me. We must acknowledge who God is. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. I said, we, we need to recognize who he is. He's the great I am. Not the I was or going to be. The is. The I am. And we need to acknowledge what God is doing. I believe at this time that we are being tried. That we are being tested. Just like Job said. I believe that at this time we're going through a testing. I hope we're up to it. I hope we're strong enough. I hope we're faithful enough to believe God. And we must have a confidence in Jesus Christ because we know who He is and he know, we know what He's doing and we must have the confidence I shall come forth as gold. I'm going to come through this better. I'm going to come through this with more value. I'm going to come through this with more purity. I'm going to, I'm going to come through this with more confidence. Because God is my refuge and He's my strength. And He's my help. My help time of trouble to overcome that giant of adversity these are just some of the things that we need to understand and we need to apply to our lives we're going to sing and worship the Lord here for a few moments tonight I do invite you to come and stand around this altar we can maintain our social distancing we can still reach out to God we can believe the Lord let's sing and magnify him I love you, Jesus.
good. tonight. God, I want to touch the hem of your garment, Lord. I need your strength. God, I'm being wore down by an adversity. There's an adversary that's been on my trail. But God, I know you're my strength. You are my refuge and you're my help. And to you, Lord, I reach out tonight. Jesus' name, Jesus. What would I do? As God is my refuge, He's a strong, mighty tower. Thank you, Jesus. Do it tonight in the name of Jesus. Oh, Jesus. God, let your healing virtue, Lord. Jesus. God, to flow through this altar, Jesus. God, let your peace. God, to flow in this place right now in the name of Jesus. I rebuke all fear in the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. My confidence is in you, Lord. I do. Courage of God is in you. 